now. Go back to deploy. Get the difference of two and four. Go ahead and run it. See that. And let's go ahead and do another oh, get local net explore. Take a look at the last transaction that we sent. Take a look at the location. You can now see we have one global state UINT. And if we go down, we can see counter is a UINT and its value is zero. So now, how do we increment it? So now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to our methods here. We're going to add a app external. I'm going to call it increment. And we're going to not have any, actually we can, we're not going to have any return values. Make it life's a little bit easier. And then we're going to do return app. So app, it refers to our instance of our app dot state. Then we're going to call dot counter dot set. So this is how we set change the value. And then we're going to do the same thing for getting it. So app dot state dot counter dot get plus int one. And again, much like earlier when working with bytes or when working with a string, we have to specify this bytes class in here. When we're working with integers, we have to specify the integer class. So let me go ahead, go down to app. I'm going to call increment. I have any arguments. I'm actually going to go ahead as I'm going to copy this twice. So we're going to call increment twice. So at the end of this, we expect there, we're not going to, it's just going to print none for a return value because we're not actually returning a return value. But if we go ahead and run it and then go back over to Daplo, go to transactions, go to the last page, take a look at this last transaction, take a look at the application. You can now see our counter is two. And so if we go ahead and add another call, and do the same exact thing and go ahead to our applications as well, probably a bit quicker and then CA3. So what's basically happening is each time we call increment or so when we call create, the counter is going to be zero. We call increment, it's going to be one and then two and then three. And so. That's core functionalities of Beaker and how contracts work on Algorand. So we've gone over the creation and development of a smart contract. Before we end today and go to the Q&A, last thing we want to show is deployment of the smart contract using Dapflow. So in here, what we've been doing is we've been calling our code, deploy the contract and create it and call it. But in order to do, we needed to get accounts from a local network, specify an account, create what we call an application client, then call to create, and then I'm going to call in on them. And we're going to be going a little bit more over how application clients work in our next session. But the important thing here is that we are using code to deploy our app, but we also have the option of deploying directly in our Dapflow GUI. So again, they get to Dapflow if we do algo kit. Local net explore. Go ahead and open it up. So you're going to come over to Beaker Studio. And if we do select app, we can import Beaker app. Delete this. One thing we need to do, though, is on Gitpod, you need to make sure that you have your contract downloaded. And so here we want to work with application JSON. I'm going to go ahead, right click, and download it. So it's saved as application one JSON. And we go ahead, import, upload a file. 
and you can't see my screen right now, but I am selecting, I selected that application one JSON. And then now I can see here that I have global state and then our approval program, our clear program, and then all the methods that we've defined here already for us. And our DAP flow was able to generate all this stuff just based on that one file, the application JSON. And so now if we want to create the app, we simply hit create app. Ah, we need to connect our wallet. So we've got to do this in order to create an app and interact with the network in general, we need a wallet. So we head over to dev wallet. You won't have one. Head over to dev wallet, do create wallet. And that'll show you as a hundred algo. And then click down here on the bottom left. We have our connect wallet dev wallet, and then we should see our address there. So if we head over back to Beaker studio and go ahead to create app, create, and now our application has been created. We're working with application ID 39 and I can go down here and I can go to my hello method. Execute, and I can see hello Joe is the return value. I can also go down to my difference method and see that it works. Before automatically calling that contract, and it'll be able to tell us what the return value is, where the transaction is. And we can also do some more advanced things like overriding the fee. We're not going to do that here, but this is the GUI that Dapflow offers. Now, one of the really cool things is so here I've been deploying on my local network. What I can also do is if I go ahead and change to I'll go no testnet. I can connect a wallet. I'm going to connect with Para. I'm going to connect a wallet. And then now what I can do is I can create the app. That's going to tell me to sign with Para. Create the application, confirm. And now it's going to take a little bit longer. So three and a half seconds to actually send to testnet. But now that I've sent it on testnet, I can see that I've deployed this app ID here on testnet and that's how easy it is to go from your local network to testnet on Dapflow, simply switching the network here and connecting your local wallet. And much like before, this works, let me zoom out a little bit, go ahead over to Beaker Studio, call hello, execute. Go ahead and sign the transaction. App call on testnet, that's perfectly fine. We're gonna go ahead and sign that transaction. And now we can see we've sent that transaction just to show that this indeed is on testnet. We're going to go ahead over to another explorer and we can see here's our transaction that we just sent. All right. So what we've done here is on DAP flow, initially, when you do AlgoKit local net explorer, it'll connect you to your own local network. But we can also go ahead and connect to testnet. And then using Beaker Studio, we can upload our application JSON file to deploy it on testnet or our local net, or you could even deploy it on mainnet if you wanted to. Again, always recommend the kind of general flow is you start with your local development network, then you go to testnet, and then you go to mainnet once you're production ready. But you can use that flow to do all three of those things. Now, also worth mentioning that you could also do the same thing in our code, right? So in our deploy script, by default, we're connecting to our local AlgoD client. We could also connect to a testnet 
but it can be often easier to do it on, especially in Python, to use Dapplow, is that allows us to sign with our like Terra wallet rather than having to manually funnel around with our accounts and our keys for signing. That concludes the introduction to all grant smart contracts, Beaker, and Dapflow. What we're going to be doing in our next session is we're going to start developing our own auction smart contract and then going over testing for it. And then on our last session, we're going to be going over actual deployment. So we're going to be deploying on testnet and then showing you how to actually integrate it into a web interface.